Huh? Chapman University. Yes, Chapman University. You're one of those kids, aren't you? I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah. <laughs> quite a few celebs go to, uh, or celebs kids go to Chapman, if I'm not mistaken. It's one of those universities where... Um, I don't know. I've never personally met any, but I have heard that my roommate knew someone. You hang out at the wrong parties, apparently. Probably, yeah. So, that's fine. <laughs> and who is this? This is Lucy, who is muted because she that's a rookie mistake. You hate to see it. <laughs> that's Hi, how fine. are you? Hi. You were trying to talk, weren't you? Uh, I am now. <laughs> That's okay. One time when I was doing a podcast, I had my mic muted. Uh, my co-host was, was doing something else. I, I was literally muted for seven minutes. I'm just talking, talking, talking. And the next thing you know, I'm staring down and there's just like this red blinking microphone. It's like, oh God, what have I done? So, yeah. That's so funny. I've done that in class too, where I've like meant to like answer something and then everyone is just like hannah like what's going on oh yeah everybody does it uh, which is why i almost never hit the, the little tip for you never hit the mute button <laughs> if you can help it just go away leave it leave it on just go into another room whatever's happening you have to blow your nose or whatever it is because you will forget yeah and when you come back people will be like you know the whole <laughs> it happens for sure all right, and this is Henry. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Henry. Did you just awesome. get up? Uh, no, sorry. I all my roommates are watching NFL in the room, so oh, I have to yeah. do it in my bedroom. So that's okay. Yeah. I, I know the feeling. <laughs> okay, it looks like everyone is here now. Why um, are you doing this on a Sunday? This is this is off book, isn't it? Well, because of all of our schedules, it was a little hard to find a time when we could all meet. So it just happened to be today. And this is Elena. Alana. Uh, Alana. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's okay. You were the last one in, which meant everyone was talking about you before you got in here. Okay. And they weren't all flattering things, I can be honest. Like that's <laughs> like that sign behind you. <laughs> All right, well, cave, cave. Um, nice. Okay, well, we will start now. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for making time to meet with us. We really appreciate this. Happy to do it. Um, so basically, we recently decided that we wanted to learn more about the Flat Earth Society and Flat Earthers. So huge mistake. Trying... Really, really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, keep going. It was Lucy's idea, just so you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but Some yeah, of you so, will probably be end up in a psychiatric ward but before this is <laughs> over, but that's fine. Do go on. Um, but we thought it would be a good idea to actually talk to a flat earther to better understand. Um, so I think we all came up with a couple questions that we would love to ask you. Sure. Um, so yeah, okay, well, I'll start. Um, I was just wondering what influenced you to become a part of the Flat Earth Society or Flat Earther? Uh, heavy psychedelic drug use, mostly, <laughs> uh, you know, switch, you, 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 you do the rotation, you know, marijuana, coke, heroin, finally get to the psychedelics and then you're into flat earth. It's, it's that quick. No, uh, I got into, no, I got into flat earth because, uh, I went through, did you guys ever see any of you see the documentary that was on Netflix and now I think it's on Amazon only uh, behind the curve. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That, that was more or less a true story which was, uh, I never got married or had kids, as you can probably tell. There's just no way my maturity level could ever cope with that. Um, and because of that, I had a lot of free time on my hands. And so I went down just about every rabbit hole you can think of, just about every conspiracy you can think of, I had an opinion on mm -hmm. to where I started running out of conspiracies to look at. Again, some I liked, some I didn't like, right? You know, JFK, yeah, there might be something there. Uh, did, did Elvis, is Elvis still alive? And did he have Bigfoot's baby? Probably not. Probably not. I, I don't, I don't necessarily give a thumbs up to that one, but I have an opinion on just about everything. And so nobody wants to look at flat earth. It's terrible. It's awful. Why would you ever want to look at it? I mean, we're, it's the only thing we do debunk to children, which is interesting in itself. 
Mm-hmm. And so that's what got me into it was the just it was the only thing left to look at. It was on my bucket list. And so mm-hmm. I spent a weekend trying to solve it and it turned into nine months. And then I just decided to put all my uh, the, the research I had done onto the Internet in sort of a vague connect the dotty sort of way and see where it took people. And never, never thought it was going to resonate. Sort of like the documentary, you know, when the the LA film team contacted us and nobody thought it was going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's like, "Ah, you know, it's not even going to get into a film festival. Next thing you know, it's everywhere. So, Uh uh, yeah, that's that's how I got into it. Gotcha. Okay, so would you say that you were like trying to debunk it or just like understand? Oh, no, no. Everybody tries to debunk it. Nobody. I have yet to meet a single person and we have a lot of people in this thing now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nobody gets into it thinking, you know, this is great idea. Flat Earth. That's fantastic. I'm going to make a YouTube channel and all sorts of social media dedicated to it. What could go wrong? No. No, it's it, it doesn't go that way. Everybody tries to shoot it down, including me. And mm-hmm. that's what I try to do. You you stare at it. Hang on. I've got a model real quick. So you stare at this thing, right? Uh-huh. You know what I was wearing shorts, did you? Probably. Maybe you did. All right. So you stare at this thing for a sorry. You stare at this thing for a while. And it looks simple from the outside. It's like, oh, it's like a child's toy. But the longer you look at it, the weirder it gets. And there's more and more questions to where if you look at this thing seriously over a period of, I don't know, a week, you're doomed because eventually you'll realize there's too many, uh, too many loose threads, too many plot mm-hmm. holes in the, in the globe model, uh, the heliocentric model. It's, it's just, it's too much. So anyway, yes, I tried to debunk, tried to debunk this. Gotcha. Okay. And nine months later, I was banging my head on the keyboard going, why can't I solve this? And it was literally turning into, if anyone's pre-law out there, I was literally trying to prove the globe in a court of law and I couldn't do it anymore. And that's why I flipped. I said, well, it's probably easier just to go on the flat side. It's not like people all over the place are going to start emailing me and calling me and saying, oh, yeah, it's not crazy. And here's why. And they did. Because, you know, Murphy's Law. That's very interesting. Well, thank you. Um, in regards to like starting to become a member or just a flat earther in general, do you right. think that there's like restrictions or requirements for becoming a flat earther? Or do you think anyone could become one? You have to be at least five foot five tall. Um, no. Uh, you, you have to have watched The Sound of Music at least three times. No. No, no, that is true. Uh, no, no, there's no, in fact, I, when I got into this back in the day, I'll even show you, uh, I was so naive about it. I actually joined probably, eh, I don't know if you can see it very well. The mm-hmm. Flatter Society out of Hong Kong, right? Yeah. Uh, that was founded, well, it wasn't founded, but like one of the primary members was uh, an 80s um, musician called uh, Thomas Dolby. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what was going on. It would, and that's that's how little I, I knew about. It. But no, uh, if you're asking about demographics, are you kind of like asking like when I go to a conference, who do I run into the most? Um, sure, yeah, the, the type of people. Okay, uh, white, Caucasian, uh, over thirty five. Most of the people that go to the conferences are red team. And you know what I say when I say red team, blue team, you know, red team being Republican, blue team, Democrat. Mm -hmm. Although that's only because the blue team members that we have try to be more quiet about it. Red team Mm -hmm. just doesn't care. They're like, ah, flat earth. Yeah, we're going to, let's do a conference. Right. Blue team. It's like, no, 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 no. My friends and family might be watching. And so, I mean, I've, I've met celebrities that absolutely will not come out of the closet. It's like, okay, I get it. You know, ever since, you know, some of the celebs came out and just got hammered by the media. Mm-hmm. Um, what is make, what makes it a little different though, is that any other conspiracy, it would skew about 95% men. Mm-hmm. However, with flat earth, it's only maybe 65% men. 
and I can say this from every con. I, mean, I just got back from a conference last week. I was in that. I'm wearing the conference shirt right here. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of families, a lot of, lot of spouses, and uh, a number of women that show up. Why? Because it's not sinister compared to the other conspiracies that are out there. With, with other conspiracies, for years and years before we came along, it was always, you know, we talked in low tones and everybody whispered and talked like Batman and, you know, overthrowing the government and everyone's black hats and they're out to get us. But, but this, you know, the whole flat earth model, there's a lot more, um, it's optimistic. There's, there's mm -hmm. a, and I've talked to a number of women that have said the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, it's kind of like a message of hope. If you're living in here inside basically a building or a box or whatever you want to call it, snow globe. Mm -hmm. then it was built just for you it was built for a purpose and the whole big bang theory you flying on this tiny little rock through space and get snuffed out at any time that goes away mm -hmm. and you know it, it it does it absolutely prove the existence of god it goes a long way because it was built you know that seems like it was built you know there's some structure to it then it had to be created by somebody and then you're really just splitting hairs which is Okay, it was either built by an older civilization that's more powerful than ourselves or the divine, but really just kind of splitting hairs there. I mean, one man's giant golden spaceship is another man's deity. So mm -hmm. anyway, sorry, I ramble. Feel free to pull me in from off-road when I go okay. there. Okay, okay. I do um, remember in the documentary, you said something about occupation. Like if you are a scientist or like a professor, then you're less likely to become a flat earther. Is there a reason behind that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mostly conditioning. Um, mm -hmm. Think about it this way. If you, when you're, when you're kids, especially in the United States, you are shown the globe, at mm -hmm. least when you're in first grade. And the flag is usually right above it. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's like, oh, yeah, it's flag. It's your country. It's where you live. Oh, yeah, by the way, that's the globe. That's where you live, right? And it's, it's the planet that you live on. And we used to think it was flat, but now it's a globe. All at that point, yeah, you may spin it a few times when you're in first and second grade, but you get tired of that. It's just in the corner, though, sitting in front of you. It's always within eyesight of you. And mm -hmm. it's there for at least 12 years, assuming, you know, you graduate from high school. Then... Some of you go and let's say you get a bachelor's degree in a physical science. That, that, just, that just puts you over the top. It's over. And, and in fact, if you have a master's degree or higher in anything, uh, you're cooked because the, the condition is just too much. I mean, yes, we, I have spoken to some PhDs and I have spoken to some master's people. And they all kind of say the same thing, which is, again, you'll, you, if you have PhD friends, what they do is when you reach that certain level, you have spent so much time and so much money on your education that it is your reality. Whatever that, you know, that manifests to be, that is your reality. And your primary goals are uh, being published, you know, in your, your published circles and, um, uh, and your peer groups. You know, the scariest word for anybody in academia when you get a certain level is ostracized. You know, when you get to that point, which is why we have a tough time getting some of those people to even debate us. You don't want to be that guy that goes up against a flat earther. Because mm -hmm. if you don't not like a boxing match, if you don't knock flat earth uh, out in the first 10 minutes, they're not looking at flat earth anymore. They're looking at you. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, then you just get just wasted by your peer groups. It's like, why did you even talk to them? Why did you even give them a platform? <laughs> Banished gone with you forever from the kingdom and, and then you never see those people again it's mm -hmm. sad it really really sad anyway go on yeah. that's an interesting um thing though thank you yeah <laughs> it could okay, happen to so. you <laughs> so i wanted to ask another question you know this sort of falls um within that topic about like the conditioning about the globe model and stuff like that. Um, right. I've noticed that Hollywood media and, you know, popular culture, like movies, TV shows, everything, um, they always portray the earth as a globe. Yep. Do you think that this is just like on purpose? Like, do you think that they're purposefully pushing the globe model or are they just sort of ignorant of the idea of a flat earth? Okay. Hollywood, it's kind of like NASA. Hollywood as a cohesive unit doesn't know any better. Hollywood runs off of money, wherever it comes from. And if you guys know, and I'm sure some of you people know producers or have family that's producers or whatever, you're in that campus. Producers are everywhere. So imagine this. 
you can, if you want to be a producer in a movie, any movie or television show, all you have to do is walk up to them with a small briefcase of money and say, hey, here's $20,000. Can I get a producer credit in your movie? Right. And they look at you and they say, yeah, sure. What do you want for that $20,000? You know, do you, do you want like, an, you know, do you want your title some, you know, somewhere in the credits? Do you, what do you want to do? And all you have to do is you say something simple, like I would like to do additional set design to this piece over here, this one room. It's all, and, and, and it's like, and they look at you and they, and you know, Hollywood, like, we'll take your money. Okay, fine. You work with the set department and we'll take a look at what you've done. And almost, so what happens is you just insert a globe of very, any color or size or whatever in some piece, and you can do it in any television show or movie. And it's been happening for, oh, good Lord, 40, 50 years to where even, you know, even the new stuff that's out on Netflix, I mean, you will see it. I'm hyper aware of it now. And they, um, where you'll notice it, it's like, fine, you see it in classrooms. We, we understand that, right? It's like, okay, it's in a classroom, right? But why is it on top of that detective's uh, filing cabinet in Chicago Police Department, right? Why is it on the top of that doctor's, you know, chest, you know, his, his uh, secretary's desk over there in the corner? Why is it always in frame? And sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. So what you do, you know, if it's just a, a, a show that gets canceled after the first three episodes or first season, eh, it didn't do very well. But remember, once it's in the set, what it, let's say it's a long running show, six, seven years, right? That is pennies on the dollar. And that globe is now in there every, you know, and it's, it's not just, they make sure that it's in there for dialogue. So you're watching characters talk and it's, it's back there. You can see it. It's, it's somewhat in focus. It's brilliant. Uh, I call them silent producers. And again, Hollywood does this with other little things. I mean, we've done it with product placement for years, right? But usually when that happens, I mean, you know, they come and it's like, all right, you want to put your Coke machine where, you know, and, and they, but it's not as, I mean, that's more blatant, but this is very subtle and most people don't see it. But if you start looking for it, I swear every show you will find, if it is not directly space related. So it can't be a show about astronauts or some sci-fi Stargate, Star Trek, Star Wars thing. That's just too, that's just too obvious. If it's, if it's down, if it's here on the ground with us, then you'll see it. So there you go. Okay. So it kind of functions like subtle propaganda almost. Sure. Where they're just putting in these little details. Sure. Why, why not? I mean, you know, it, uh, all you have to do, in fact, the, the stories that, you know, when you're releasing them, it's in the news, forget about what's on, you know, streaming or on film, think, think about things that, um, the stories that come out every once in a while. And I, again, I'm older, so I tend to pick up on these things, which is like an asteroid, a near a flyby asteroid. Every freaking month or every other month, there is some sort of asteroid going to be near Earth. Never, ever hits, never, ever hits. Just bring it up. Why? You know, or, or any other thing that's, that's planet related. Oh, look, there's something funny on Mars. Oh, look, the rings of Saturn look weird, or the spot on Jupiter looks weird, or we're reclassifying Pluto, or so on and so on. They don't even care if they read the article. All they do, the article says one thing, which is you're looking in space because you're on a globe. That's it. That's all they have to do. And it's great. It's great reinforcement and has worked for a very, very long time. So kudos to them. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, why do you think that uh, people are so resistant to the idea of a flat earth? Is it because of the conditioning that's been going on um, for so long? Or do you feel like maybe people just don't step out of the box to learn other points of view? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a wonderful quote, and I don't want to screw it up. Let me read it really fast. There's a wonderful quote by George Orwell, you know, the guy that wrote 1984 back in the day. Uh, he wrote this in 1946 in the Tribune. You can look it up. He goes, most people, if asked to prove that the earth is round, would not even bother, he's not a flat earther, by the way, even bothered to produce the rather weak arguments I have outlined above. They would start off by saying that everyone knows the earth to be round. And if pressed further, would become angry. In a way, Shaw is right. This is a credulous age and the burden of knowledge, which we now have to carry is partially responsible. Now, what he was saying there was that science, whatever science says, the people generally just take it as face value. It's like, well, they're obviously intellectuals. They're smarter than us. Therefore, it must be true. And so it was curious when he would go out on the streets in 1946 and say, hey, how do you know the earth is a globe? And people immediately, knee-jerk reactions, like, what are you talking about? We know, you know, Game of Thrones. It is known. It is a globe. It's like, really? How do you know? Right? You don't have a spaceship. You've never been up there. I mean, yeah, you can put your faith in the U.S. military. 
they'd never lie about anything ever. But uh, but but that's but that's the point, which is it's then people start their, the, their gears start grinding because then you start figuring out it's like, wait, you don't know the earth is round. I'm sorry, you don't know the earth is a globe. D um, uh, dining room tables are round, your hubcap is round, right? You know, sphere, globe, ball. You don't know the, the world is a globe. You were told. And then your family, uh, you know, uh, your family lineage going back 500 years were told this. What I think was interesting was, is that when he was walking around 1946, everybody in the world knew it was a globe. Well, NASA wouldn't even be founded for another 12 years. How did everybody know? They didn't know. They were told. Look at like uh, going all the way back to Hollywood. The early, the, the one of the first universal logos going all the way back to the 30s was a was a little biplane flying around the, the, the perfect earth. How? How'd you know this? There was no space travel. World War II hadn't even been fought yet. How'd you know this? It's a great propaganda piece that has been slowly morphed and evolved over time and, and done very, very well. Very interesting, thank you. Um, now, I know that flat earthers get a lot of flack um, online, in person. I've seen the comments and stuff like that. Um, how do you respond to that kind of criticism or backlash that you receive, whether it's online or um, in person? First off, you gotta take up drinking. You gotta do it soon. There's a lot of crying, weeping. I mean, heavy, open, sobbing in a corner in a fetal position. No, no, that's not the case. Although I have run into a lot of people that do that. And in fact, one of my, in fact, the, the woman on the documentary you're watching, Patricia Steer, you know, the pretty redhead. Mm -hmm. She uh, is not doing the speaking tour anymore because <laughs> the trolls just got to her. I mean, there are some people that you guys know, I mean, you're part of the whole social media thing. There are some people that absolutely, I'm older, I'm Gen X. Uh, they live and die of social media you know, the, the comment section, right? You know, you can read, you can read 20 wonderful comments in a row. And then all of a sudden it's like, you suck. I hate you. And here's why. And then you just focus on that for a week, right? She read every single comment from every single person ever. And then she sanitized them and blocked as many people as she could. I said, you can't keep this up. You keep making more videos. I mean, what if you do a hundred videos? What if you do 200 videos? You're going to sanitize in perpetuity, all these videos. And she did. And then she snapped. She lost it because somebody did a, um, do you guys know what a wellness check is? Is that, a, mm -hmm. no, yeah. So where you send, uh, you call, it's like usually for older people, right? It's like, Hey, my grandma hasn't been answering the door. Can you get some cops to knock on her door? Well, they did that to Patricia, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> during, during a podcast of hers, didn't do it. It wasn't like a swatting thing where they, you know, kicked down the door, you know, guns blazing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, it wasn't good. So as far as flat, what was the original question? Um, how do I deal with it? Or, or is it true that, the, or why does it happen? Um, more so like, how do you respond to it or deal with it? Oh yeah. You don't read the comments. That's, that's the easiest part. Uh, the trolls cannot get to you if they can't get to you. Meaning uh, trolls are notoriously lazy. This is a tip for you, all you guys, actually. Trolls will generally only post in a comment section. They will not spoof an email to email you directly. They will not look. I mean, my real phone number is out there, right? My phone isn't blowing up. Why? <laughs> Trolls are scared. That's why they're not going to call. They have to spoof a, a phone number just to call me. Now, to be fair, no woman should ever put her phone number out on the internet ever, ever, ever. ever. No, no. For, till, till the end of time, never, ever happened because men are idiots. No offense, Henry. Right? You're a great guy. But, I'm but, men, but men are <clears throat> like that. I mean, what happens is it guys generally will happen. They'll have a couple of drinks in them. And then they'll look, they'll look at somebody's wherever it's like, oh, she's got her contact info. It's only 2.30 in the morning. I'm going to call her. And they will. They absolutely will. But trolls will not because they'd have to fake it. And it's too, their tro trolls are absolutely lazy. So to your point, I just try to, ignore, I, I do, one of my t-shirts could read, don't feed the trolls. But every once in a while I do, just let them know I'm still around. So I'll, I'll go into comment sections and I'll just cherry pick a few and I'll be like, you know, something clever that shuts them down and they just lose their minds. So, uh, but for the most part, yeah, if you want to keep your self-esteem at all, don't, don't rely on the social media response, you know, the, the comment sections for how your day goes. Because it's with Flat Earth, it, it can get brutal, absolutely brutal. And for, with ours, I mean, mainstream media, ugh cruel look what they did to Kyrie Irving 
was not fun. Mm-hmm. Or Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. He was with us for 10 days. He's back with us now. But one of his sponsors contacted him and said, yeah, so you want this sponsorship or not? Because he still makes, I think, like $20 million a year. I don't even remember what decade he stopped playing. So, sorry. Go on. That was great. Thank you. I think um, I'm going to pass it to Alana. I think she has some questions coming up. Okay. Um, my first question is, what is the best part about being a flat earther? You know what? No one's ever asked me that question. <laughs> and that's saying something because I have gotten a lot of questions over the last seven years. No one's <laughs> ever asked me that. Gold star. Well, huh? <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's such a simple question, but no, no one's ever bothered. Uh, because most people focus on the negatives. It's like, do you want to kill yourself daily? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, no, uh, the best part is the community. Uh, we have a, in fact, we, we built a few years ago um, something called, it's not even in the documentary, called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock App. Just to show people, because I get a lot of emails. It's like, I'm so alone. There's no Flat Earthers around me. It's like, look. Flat earthers don't wear armbands or special t-shirts generally or bumper stickers or anything like that. I mean, a few do. Most don't. There, I guarantee you know flat earthers. I guarantee it right now. In fact, what we built the app so, so that people can sign up and, and basically put their blue dot. And, you know, it's not like it shows, you know, your name. To, you know, it, it puts your tag. But if you want the info, you have to, you know, do jump through a few hoops to find out who that person is. It's not like they can just reach out to you. But it's incredible how many people there are. Um, that signed up for that just in the United States the English speaking countries are generally the, the the biggest so sorry get get back to your original question the best part is the community because once you're in it is a red pill blue pill matrix type thing and I know you guys are like is that are any of you 21 yet yeah okay good so you've heard of the matrix yeah okay perfect so the, the matrix was a red pill, blue pill thing, which was once you were awake, you couldn't go back, meaning, you know, you couldn't. And the same thing with, with flat earth. Once you know about flat earth, once you, once this model gets stuck in your head, you were the one that tore it down in the first, you know, tore down the globe in the first place. You can't go back. So because of that, you hang, then all your friends, the people you hang out mostly are just like you. I, again, I just got back from a, a conference and the energy levels are through the freaking roof because everybody's so open-minded to everything once you once you get the whole concept that yeah you may be living in a truman show you may be living in a giant hollywood backlot then everything is open to you every possibility you don't shoot down anybody you don't judge anybody at face value anymore because how can you right i i, I love that you know, beforehand people who come up to me it's like yeah hey, you know what elvis is still alive this year he's dating bigfoot and i'd be like get the hell out of here and i don't even talk to you anymore now hey you know what I got a few minutes. What do you got? Because how, how could I not? It'd be hypocritical to shoot them down. I opened my day with flat earth, right? Which is the, the nuttiest thing ever. So the, the best part has got to be without a doubt, uh, the energy levels you get when you're hanging out with your, uh, fellow flat earthers for lack of a better term. It is, it is, I mean, I have done, con- it, like even the, the documentary, which you saw, which was our first conference uh, back in 2017 in Raleigh, nobody slept. I mean, we closed bars and I mean, granted conventions are really for partying anyway. You'll figure that out later. But, but imagine that with a, with a group of people that just their minds are just so buzzing and you know, people that, that traveled thousands of miles because they thought they were alone and they weren't alone. They show up in this building and nobody there is judging them for anything and they just share ideas and that is by far uh the the greatest thing that we have it doesn't doesn't cost a cent just sharing of ideas and knowing that everyone's kind of on the same page as you that's great um what was the name of the app that you mentioned oh yeah yeah yeah. it is the uh, i could probably I'll, i'll give you a link eventually it's the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app and i will See if I can find it really fast for you guys. I can think I can paste it in. Yeah, you can put it in the chat. I think. Yeah, let me see. It. Let's see if this works. I don't think that's it. Hang on. But anyway, go ahead with your with your question while you're doing that. You um, so my next question is, 
why can't um, we fall off the side of the earth if it's flat? Got it. Why can't flat earth, sun, moon, and zodiac clock up? Oh, I got to make sure I find this. I don't want to lose this because David would kill me if I didn't send it to you. <laughs> sun, moon, and zodiac. Yeah, here it is. Um, I could also show you on my phone, but you guys will get this. It's a really, really cool app. And you could freak freak your professors out because you can say, look how many people are running around us. There's people on campus right now that are flat earths and moving around. It's like, yes, <laughs> we live among you. Uh, so what was the question again? Um, why can't we fall off the side? Oh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well, with this model right here. How can you, why, when you're at a lake or a pond, how do you not fall off the edge? Because it's got an edge to it. So you are living in a building, a structure that is X number of miles wide and covered by a dome that's X number of, it's basically a big sound stage. And the outer rim, uh, all the continents basically on in in the inside look more or less the same. You'll see this on the app, by the way. And, but the outer part is Antarctica. That's the only continent that doesn't make sense at all uh, to anybody because it doesn't look like a snow-covered Australia. It's this giant, massive continent that stretches around the outer edge, and that's what keeps the water in. By the way, this also means the soundstage could be sitting anywhere. Don't let the scientists say, you know, oh, this is stupid, this is floating in space. It's like, why, why, what space? No, that's a whole nother thing, which is like, we, we don't even think there's space. Space is just lights on a ceiling. You haven't been there. The only people who have been there have been the military. So um, you were not this pancake world. It's not Asgard. Like from the Thor movies, which did us no favors with cosmic waterfalls. No, it's not that. No, you're just living in a building probably on somebody's desk. <laughs> um, my next question was, um, what do you think about the photos of Earth from space? But you kind of answered that earlier. Utter crap. <laughs> <laughs> Utter crap. Um, <clears throat> let me give you some quick examples. So the first blue marble you can look this up this is not secret information none of what i've given you is secret information it's not like i found some treasure trove of, of very cool stuff um the first blue marble shot taken from space was in 1972 by apollo 17 on the way back the last mission the americans ever claimed to have gone to the moon right which shows and you can look it up but blue marble from space 1972 it'll show the lower part of Africa and all of Antarctica, which is really weird for a U.S. space program. It's like, why wouldn't you show America? Isn't that the whole point? You know, rah, rah, wave the flag. Oh, no, no, we're going to show Africa. Why? No one ever said. You know when the next picture was? The next blue marble picture was taken? 2015. That's 43 years. What happened? I mean, in fact, we know this for an absolute fact because Obama was the one that released it. It's like, oh, second blue marble shot from space. It's a terrible impression, but you know where I'm going with this. In fact, Scott Kelly, an astronaut, wrote the press briefing. So what happened for most of the 70s, all of the 80s, all of the 90s, uh, 2000, 2000, halfway to 2020, no one took a, a blue marble shot of the Earth. That's because they're scared to death of faking it. Um, in fact, you know, again, find a... Um, an astronaut shot of it where an astronaut spins around with the camera running. Find me a shot of a satellite. Find me a video of a satellite in real time just sitting there. Right? Satellites, if you look, you know, look up satellites from space, almost all of them will be computer images. And the only ones recently have been made been by SpaceX, which that's a whole nother. I could spend a day going after SpaceX. So, no, everything that is made by, uh, it, by NASA is just crap. And rightly so, because if the, the Apollo program was fake, then everything has to be fake. Some people have said, oh, okay, Apollo was fake, the moon missions were fake, but that doesn't mean the space station's fake. It's like, no, you don't get it. It's the rule of crime, which is if you're going to commit one crime, everything might as well be, because when you get in trouble, you're going to get hit for everything. So there's no point for any of it to be real. So fake it all. To, you know, take the money, they, they take what, push in $60 million a day, their budget, and that's just NASA, and they siphon it into other things, and then they show people bad graphics, and people get it. And, sorry, one more thing real fast. It always stunned me when I would go outside of this country, and I would ask people why they believe the Americans went to the moon, right? I mean, here, it's like, it's, it's part of our patriotic duty. It's like, wave the flag, oh, we're the greatest, we went to the moon. But outside, so I, go, so I was in Sweden, and it's like, okay, why do you Swedish people think that Americans went to the moon? It doesn't matter who I ask. They all say the same thing, which is, well, because it was on television. 
And, well, the American media would lie. The news doesn't lie. I go, wow. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> really? You don't think, you know, news media outlets aren't owned by corporations, when aren't owned by bigger corporations, which don't have ulterior motives. Of course, they yeah. do. So. I know some people question whether or not, like, um, the first time they went to the moon is real because in the picture, the flag was, like, like floating. It wasn't like. Oh, I'll okay. go even one step further for you. Ready? You know, I'll, I, just for you guys, we'll do this. <laughs> oh, where is it? <clears throat> Here's a great little shot. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, let's do this one. This one's not too big. I'm gonna put this. I think I can put this in the chat. Should be there right about now. Tell me when you guys can open that. Can open that. A little uh -huh. po Polo shot in chat. See it? Yeah, I do see it. Okay. This is a random shot. It's time and date stamped from Apollo 12, 1969. Right? Forget about the flag. <laughs> flag. <laughs> That's nothing. And, and by the way, I will not even mention, just for the hell of it, I won't even mention the fact that there are no stars in any shot ever. <laughs> it's always just this pure, pure black background. And they did that for a very obvious reason, which was... You're never going to get the stars right if you're, da you're, you're time stamping everything. So all it takes seriously is one nerd in his underwear in the middle of Nebraska at 3 a.m. He's going to be like, oh, the belt of Orion that shouldn't be there. It should be over there. And that's it. You, it's over. You're, you're done. And so it don't, that's a short conversation. It's like, yeah, no stars. No stars ever, ever. But forget about that. Three quick things. Ready? Uh, you guys take physics at all? Anything uh, with, with light? Photography. Anybody take photography? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. One light source, the sun, 93 million miles away. You can see this down where you guys are right now. Uh, all the shadows should be running parallel. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not there. It's not, though. Nope. All those shadows are going to converge in a hurry. Like what? Like a studio lights behind them, like 30 yards away and maybe 25 feet up. I'm not saying I'm an expert on lighting, but I hang out with a few producers. Uh, that's that's the first one. Uh, number two would be, you know, this perfect four inch layer of ash across the entire thing. You know this because there's footprints everywhere, right? You take even the smallest step. There's footprints all over this thing, right? But that giant engine where that thing sat down and there isn't a blast crater or anything pushed out of the way at all. There's no splay pattern. It just, just sets there. It just landed. Nothing ever got knocked out of the way. I'll give you two more, which is uh, that, that dish. Hey, that's a pretty dish, right? That is a VHF transmitter from 1969. That thing has a range of maybe 50 miles, and that's Morse code on a good day. It runs off a car battery. It's not even secret information. This is not, and you're telling me this thing, remember, 50 miles, maybe. You're seeing this thing does perfect two-way communication and 10 frames of color video a second a quarter million miles away. And if you're saying, oh, no, we're bouncing off the capsule up above and that's going to the earth, that's even worse. That's a moving target to a moving target. And with crystal clarity, no problems with communication? No, <laughs> no. But my favorite, which was a, a challenge I put out to science for a while, which is the, the space suits they're, they're wearing, which is you can look this up on YouTube it's, or any, any platform, it doesn't really matter. Anything in a vacuum chamber, right? A vacuum chamber. So what we're breathing in now is not nothing. Right, you're basically breathing in invisible gases. Right, it's 20% oxygen and most and mostly nitrogen. But if you take that away, it has to be filled with something. So, when you're in, like, say, the moon where there's no atmosphere at all, and you've got a soft spacesuit out there, why is that spacesuit not turning into a basketball? Right. In fact, if you took a basketball and throw it out there, it would just boom, boom football, boom, volleyball, boom. Spacesuit doesn't. I, I've asked scientists, it's like, what in that magic backpack of yours is counteracting the vacuum of space? No one will answer it. No one, will, how can they? I can't, look, I love science fiction. I can't even make up a theory that can counteract that. It doesn't make any damn sense. And so I, I uh, he all of a sudden, I, I remember one morning, uh, somebody sent me a link. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's a Tesla Roadster in space. It was just a still image. And I was going, I go, oh, it's funny. Who made that? Jaron or one of the guys from the conferences? And it, it's like, no, man, that's a live feed. I was going, 
what do you, what do you talk? I started to develop like a tick. It's like, that's impossible. How could you, who's putting a, a convertible in space? And supposedly Tesla, he's complete fraud on all fronts, by the way. Oh my God. He's so horrible. Um, where this, uh, this car had three HD cameras on it. One in the side, one in the front, one in the back. And there it was spinning around. I'm going, wait a minute, nothing's happening to the car. Right. You know, we're talking, you know, plus 250, negative 250 degrees, the, this, the window should have spider web things should have warped immediately it was just it should the thing should have been devastated and the tire should have blown up all the pressurized systems should have just detonated inside the car it should have been uh, it would have been a spectacle to see nope it's absolutely perfect just sitting there spinning around in space they never put it in the dealerships you know you go to a tesla dealership nope that should have been no other cars everyone doing anything in space but you know what got me more than anything it was there's no branding right this is America. We brand everything, right? Uh, but there was no branding, meaning uh, there, there was, you should have, you know, this thing should have looked like NASCAR. It, there was no big Tesla logo. There was no big SpaceX logo. In fact, even the, the, the passenger, which is some, some generic mannequin, was just sitting there. And it's, it's just not, and with, with a single logo, it's because they weren't sure if it, they were going to be able to pull this thing off. And sure enough, a lot of people are like, hashtag not buying it, hashtag fake, hashtag who cares, Right. But it's like, and again, why didn't you put the flagship car? Why didn't you use, use the four door sedan, which everybody drives? You know, nobody drives that stupid convertible. Why didn't you use that? In fact, you could have sold the, the rights to Disney and put, I mean, it's a four seater. You could have put, I don't know, Iron Man, Groot, a stormtrooper, and Boat Buffet. Thing would have paid for itself. Nope. Nope. And they only did it once, and that was it. No one ever talked about it again. So I don't remember what the original question was. What was the original question? Um, it was. What do you think about the photos of Earth from space? Oh, it's absolute garbage. Everything, yeah. And, and he's he's making it worse. What's the cat's name, by the way? Um, Boots. Oh, She's a Boots kitten. is tired. <laughs> I like cats. Why? Hey, Boots. Um, Boots has got a great face. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the, the photos, there's, there's never been, I mean, I could show you photos all day long. But the point is, if one's fake, then they all have to be fake. Meaning, once, why, why would anything have to be real, right? And to that effect, why would astronauts ever, you know, it's like there's, no, again, this goes way back to like to the 1980s, uh, the Challenger disaster, where a space shuttle blew up, right, you know, on, on when it was taking off. But we found out that six of the seven of those people were still walking around today because witness, we were, the internet wasn't even up back in 1986. You could put people in witness relocation programs and relocate them and do whatever. We even interviewed one of them. And in his house, he was shoveling snow in his driveway. It was brilliant. Of course, he wasn't going to admit that it was him, but he looked exactly like him 30 years later. And the, you know what the part that got me about that? And that, I've got that video on my channel, by the way. You can look at it. Which is, he didn't do the obvious thing, which everybody in every crime show does, which is he didn't give his alibi. First thing you do if somebody accuses you of being somewhere, it's like, yeah, didn't you die on the sh shuttle disaster in 86? First thing you should have done is, no, in 1986, I was doing blah, blah, blah. Never said it. Never, ever came up. It's like, all he said was, oh, yeah, you know, people have told me I looked like him my entire life. It's like, wow, that's kind of random that people would say you looked like a major astronaut your entire life. Wow, it's crazy. Sorry, I get excited about this stuff. All right, what else you got? Thank you so much. Um, I think I'm going to have Henry uh, ask you a few questions now. Okay. Yeah. So you touched briefly on conferences and yep. uh, just like meetups. I was wondering <clears throat> how often those occur and what kind of, if you can go deeper into what you guys talk about or like where you go for those type of things. When we say meetups, it's mostly, you know, cults and rituals you gotta remember those two terms a lot of sacrifices many dead so i wouldn't recommend that you guys go being that you are you're younger no i'm kidding uh there are we do okay before the pandemic we were doing um, i couldn't even keep up with the amount of meetups and conferences we were doing i did i did conferences conferences in seven countries in 2019 it was just nuts we could do no wrong and in fact uh I, I was having a hard, we had, we had uh, to start up a, a special meetup page. I don't have the link to that, but I've got meetups on my uh, channel right now, which is oh, really, really quick, fast. One second. Uh, meetups, meetups, meetups. Uh, let's see. Tennis meet, meetup, October 20th. Oh, that was yesterday. I can get rid of that one. Uh, New Zealand meetup, November 5th. 
Utah meetup November 12th. Just did the Flattoberfest, which is the big U.S. conference. We just did that last week and so on and so on. Um, uh, in fact, we just did one in L.A. Uh, three weeks, four weeks ago, like 80 people showed up. It was awesome. It's great. I don't, I don't generally do the regional meetups. I mean, people want to fly me out to them. Great. I mean, I was flown out to a meetup in Indiana a couple of months ago, which was fantastic. And all you do really, it's nothing, it's, there's nothing fancy about the meetups, which is you just pick a, a quiet restaurant or a bar and you just say, Hey, I got to do a thing. And, and you let the bar know, or it's like, Hey, can we get a table for ever how many people? And people show up they just magically appear out of the woodwork and they don't even RSVP most of the time because they want to be really quiet about it. I would be amazed how many people's like, my spouse doesn't know I'm here, but uh, the conference is more organized and we did, uh Oh, his video jammed up. Henry. Henry's dead, obviously. Yep. It was a drone strike or a meteor or a volcano or something. Well, we'll miss Henry. I'll do a memorial video for him. Um, <laughs> The uh, no, seriously, he's he's I'll miss him. He seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> the uh, uh, where's it go with this? The 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 conferences are fantastic, and we did. I literally lost track, it was dizzying how many events we were doing before. The, the only thing that slowed us down, seriously, was the pandemic because the international borders closed. That was it. I mean, a, a real quick story I was supposed to, I just gotten back from London from doing a, a morning talk show because why not? And they said, oh, yeah, come back out. It's like, why? It's like, oh, good. because there's a thing out here called Pancake Day. Pancake Day, that's a thing in England. You guys are weird. I mean, aside from, you know, having a king and queen, which is just silly, right? And uh, they said, no, it's pancakes, it's round and flat. And it's like, we can tie this into flatter. It's like, really? It's like, yeah, it's a McDonald's commercial. It's like, I'm in. Send me tickets. So we, I'm all ready to go. And then the next thing you know, the borders closed and, and that was it for two years and change it was awful it was absolutely freaking mm -hmm. terrible but yeah the the meetups and the conferences wonderful 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 i can't recommend them enough and henry may or may not be back on no no that's that's actually the memorial thing the logo perfect <laughs> h that's all we need on his tombstone just h oh there he is henry i'm so so glad you're back <laughs> henry did you catch any of that his audio is off. Mute yeah, button, so. sweetie. Mute button. He can't hear me. Henry, can you hear us? That's all right. Who else had questions? Are you <laughs> keeping track? Of, are you keeping track of the time, by the way? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, I think Henry might have had one more. But oh, and he's gone again. It's okay. He, um, he, he was there, and then he was he was going to black out. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's trying one more time. So <laughs> okay, hey, sorry about that. That's all right. They were laughing uh, at you. <laughs> my group will fill me in on what you said, but yeah. my uh, my last question was just about the certification process. I know you touched that you got it in Thailand. Or oh no no no, there is no <laughs> please this thing. Oh. No 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 no. There okay. is there is no certification process. Um, okay. What my point was, and I don't know if I covered this in, doc in the documentary, when I went to these guys, it was really weird because there was only a group of like 500 people on this one website and the trolls were running the velvet ropes out front. And the trolls were, I've never seen that before, where the trolls are saying, if they're not serious, go away, there's nothing to see here, go away, there's, they're not serious. It's like, why would you guys be having trolls run the freaking, the, 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 the door to, mm -hmm. to flat earth? And so I, I quickly pointed out, I go, look, if you guys want to do anything, in this community, we're just going to have to start up our own. And that's when Flat Earth 2.0 happened. There are no requirements. There mm -hmm. is no membership fee. There is no, I mean, yeah, if you get the app and you want to sign up for like a, a, you know, some sort of blue dot connection process, I think there's a, there's a yearly thing, but the rest of it is, but the apps, you know, the rest of it, I think the app's like two ninety nine. dollars Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Is this the app? You can see. Flat Earth, Sun, Moon. Yeah, that's it. You have okay. it. Um, no, I didn't download it. I just looked it up. You should download it. Seriously. <laughs> one of us. One of us. No, no, it's really, it, no, it really, I was one of the things I regretted because I was into Flat Earth for a while and he had already had most of it built and I didn't download it for a year. Then I finally got it. I was like, oh, it's so cool. Well, here, I'll show you really fast. So it is, what the cool part about it, it's real time. So 
I don't know. I don't want to do the friend finder right now. Here, look. So it's real time. It'll it it shows you what's in sunlight and what's in the in the shade and all the questions. It's got a huge Q and A section in there. So it's mm -hmm. like, what about sunsets? What about eclipses? What about meteorites? If you can think of it, it's in there somewhere. And uh, it's pretty damn slick. I gotta tell you. And and plus visual pictures worth a thousand words. It's like, what's flat Earth look like? It's like looks like that. <laughs> And, you know, either that or you have to carry around that model that, that I carry, which works very, very well. But, you know, the kids like, you know, they like the apps and the TikToks and the internets. True. So. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. What else uh -huh. you got? I think we just have one more question to ask you. Before. Nope, I don't think so. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering if there's like one takeaway or one thing that you would want people to um, like remember after learning about the flat earth society? Yeah. Uh, well, two things. One, we don't even consider ourselves the flat earth society. Um, we are just the flat earth movement or flat earth 2.0 or social media, flat earth, flat earth, social media, whatever. Just make up something. There's, <laughs> there's tons of t-shirts out there. Um, that, that's the first part. The second part is don't anything I just, what I've been talking to you guys for an hour and change um, about, don't take it as gospel. Mm -hmm. um you're going to you know i'm not here to convince you or persuade you i am here just to put the seeds in your head and you guys can go do whatever you want with it in the end what will happen is either you tear down the globe yourself or you don't mm -hmm. however a word of warning again this is straight out of the matrix and i am not kidding when i say this if you wake up every day and you're super happy and everything's great and life's just wonderful uh, you have no problems at all. Everything's awesome. As the song goes, don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. look into this because when you go down that part, you know, when you go down that road and eventually you start seeing this, you can't go back. There's mm -hmm. nothing, there's nothing to go back to. It's very, you know, cause again, you were the one that tore down the globe in the first place. How are you going to put it back together? You can't, we have a 99% retention rate. Mm -hmm. that's both a good thing and a bad thing because but i mean i've had people say you ruined my life not in a necessarily bad way but you know what i mean right it's like i can't see things the same way again so be careful if mm -hmm. you're if you're going to do this and and if you're going to ever bring it up to people if people you know the the people that are really into the space program if they're wearing a nasa shirt yeah probably not a good idea to bring it up to them ever but you know it's it is a very polarizing topic mm -hmm. i mean you go into youtube type in flat earth you see, every major channel has covered this at mm -hmm. some point or another uh and it is extremely triggering for some people other people not as much so yeah yeah do your own research ask questions that's that's my my big takeaway all right well thank you we definitely will um do any of you guys have any last questions Anything? Anything that's sticking out? I don't think so. No? Right. You just want to play with the cat again, don't you? <laughs> no. Uh, you don't have to lie to make friends. <laughs> the cat uh, is... Yeah. No, 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 thank you guys. It was, it was a pleasure. Uh, what class is this for? This is for a sociology class. Uh, I've done a few of those. Awesome. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the professor in question, well, did they know you're doing it? Yes. Awesome. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it should it should go well, I, I yes. think, you know, for sociology, they always like it's like, oh, yeah, I hear these people They're again, the, the people sorry, last takeaway, which is the people that are in this are not some fringe group that started out as, you know, big loony anti government red team people. Mm -hmm. They were just people like anybody else that just started looking into it. It's like, yeah, maybe it's not that nuts. Right. and you get kind of get sucked in. And I, I still like it because there's nothing sinister about it. Mm -hmm. it, there's a there's a real happy aspect to it it's like look if you're here then it makes life a whole much more simple mm -hmm. so there you go anyway well, thank you thank you very much uh, if you have any if you need any other resources any any videos or anything shoot me an email or look at you know again the app and i'm not pushing it because i make any money off of it you know the app will, will answer tons and tons of questions literally just you know what about this click what about this click so. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll definitely look into it. Thank right you so much, though. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Long live Flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs>